Hi, this is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In my previous video we talked about the RAM of a computer being like a post office where there are many post office boxes and we can store something in a post office box and we can take something out of a post office box. The things in, a, in, a, in the RAM of a computer, the things that we can store in the RAM are binary numbers or binary values which are strings of zeros and ones. So if we want to store a value in a computer where it first of all has to be converted to binary. Thankfully we don't have to do that as a programmer. We don't have to convert to binary. But nonetheless it's a little helpful for us to understand what a binary number is and how it's stored in the computer. And I hope to make that clear, the reason that we want to know that uh, soon here in one of the subsequent videos. So let's say that we want to store the number 93 in the computer. So 93 is a decimal number, and what I mean by that is it's base 10. And let's say that we want to store that in the computer. That, first of all, has to be converted to a binary number. So we're looking to see what does that equal, what is that, as a base 2 number. We would like to know how to convert this thing to base 2. To do that, what we really want to find out is which powers of 2 do we have to add together to equal 93 base 10. So we can start to find that out by looking at, looking at powers of 2 and deciding how many of these powers of 2 we have to add together. And it's actually helpful if we start by writing down the powers of 2 um, for ourselves here. So Let's say that uh, we want to convert to, um, if we're going to convert this 93 to base, to base 2, we're going to start over here writing down some powers of 2 for ourselves. We'll write down 2 to the 0, and then uh, 2 to the 1st, and uh, 2 to the 2nd, and 2 to the 3rd. And how many of these do we write down? Well, I happen to know that we're probably going to want to go through 2 to the 7th, um, and I'll explain that here. So we'll go 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th, and 2 to the 7th. If I count up the number of powers of 2 that I have here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I have 8 powers of 2 here, and that turns out to be 1 byte in a computer, which is what one of these post office boxes can hold. They can hold 1 byte in the computer. Now it's also going to be helpful for us to know what are the values of these powers of 2. So we're going to write down here that's 1, 2 to the first is 2, 2 squared of course is 4, cubed is 8, to the fourth power is 16, and you can see the pattern here we're just multiplying by 2 each time which makes sense. So 32 since they're powers of 2, 64, and the last one is 128. Okay, so we've got the values for these powers of 2. What we need to do to convert this, this 93 base 10 to um, its power of 2, what we need to do is find the largest power of 2 that will go into 93. We want to start with the largest one. And 128 will not go into 93, so there can't be any 128s in 93, so we're going to write down a 0 for that. Um, and, uh, and right next to that we have 2 to the 6th, which is 64, and 164 can fit into, uh, can be subtracted from a 93. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 64 from 93, and just looking at that, looks like we get 29 as the result of doing the subtraction. So we have 164 that goes into 100 and, or goes into 93. Good news is we can't have 2 because a binary number is composed of zeros and ones. So we only have to worry about whether there's 1 or there's 0. If you find that there's 2 then you need to look at the next power of 2 up. Um, so for the next one, we have 29 left, and this is 32, and 32 won't go into 29, so we must have 0, 2 to the fifths in this binary number. Um, 16, that will go into it, so we'll just go ahead and 
take one of those 16s and subtract it from 29 and we get 13 as the result there. And uh, that means an 8 can go into it. So we can go ahead and subtract 8 from 13 and we get 5 as our result. And uh, that means we can get a 4 to go into it. Um, it also means that we don't need any 2 to the 1st in there and we need just one uh, 2 to the 0. So there is a binary number now that represents the value 93. So this is equal to 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, base 2. So 93 base 10 if it's stored in the RAM of the computer in one of these post office boxes is stored as a sequence of zeros and ones that looks like that. That is, the ni that is 93 um, base 10 as a base 2 number, as a binary number. Now, eight of those bits together compose one byte. So this number that I've written here is one byte within the RAM. And you can see if I were to add up all of the powers of 2 that I have down here, if I were to look at all of these powers of 2 and their values, their associated values, and add all of these up, it would actually come out to 255. And it turns out that that, of course, isn't very big. 255 is pretty small. So if we want to represent a binary number that's larger, we're going to take four of those bytes and combine them together to form one word. And a word allows us to store numbers from about zero all the way on up to about four billion. Um, so uh, two to the zero, if we added up two to the zero all the way through two to the 31st, you would find out how many different numbers could be, uh, how many, how big a number could be stored in uh, in the computer. Um, 2 to the 32, one word, um, is how many different integers we could store. Um, the RAM of a computer then is composed of bytes. Bytes can be grouped into words four at a time. Um, so for example, bytes 0 through 3 form one word. Bytes 4 through 7 form another word, bytes 8 through 11 form another word. So we can group four bytes at a time together in RAM to produce words within the, within the RAM. The 1,024 bytes form what's called a kilobyte, or sometimes abbreviated KB. So we can write some of these things down here. Um, 1,024 1,024, which is actually 2 to the 10th, um, 2 to the 10th, make sure that's visible there, bytes, okay, 2 to the 10th bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte, and it's abbreviated KB. Um, 2 to the 10th, 2 to the 10th kilobytes, if I were going to take that, 2 to the 10th kilobytes is equal to 1, what's called a megabyte. And we can go on from there, 2 to the 10th megabytes is equal to 1 gigabyte. And gigabyte is about the range where um, we have for the RAM. So we have about, we have about, uh, um, somewhere in, in our computers today, somewhere between one gigabyte and maybe four gigabytes of RAM that we can access. Um, so it just kind of depends on, on uh, the computer that you have, how much RAM that you actually have in your computer. Um, most of the hard drives today can store quite a bit of data as well, and they generally store data in the terabyte range, about a thousand uh, 1,024 um, gigabytes is one terabyte. So just to review here, we have memory composed of bytes. 1,024 bytes together is a kilobyte. 1,024 kilobytes is a megabyte. 1,024 megabytes is a gigabyte. And 1,024 gigabytes is a terabyte. And one more thing, we can group 
bytes together four at a time to form words so that we can store integers that are larger than 255. Uh, that's about it for this time. Next time we'll learn how to store negative numbers in the computer as well.